My early experience with the seventh day was sleep in, watch TV most of the day, because there was big talk was on, as I recall at that time, of a carnival type event. There was some college football on on Saturdays. And I, after I did some of my chores, I was able to watch TV and do whatever else, play sports. In short, I did my thing. That was Saturday for me. That was Saturday for me because I wasn't in the church. Then my brother Dave had to go listen to the World Tomorrow program and bring in the concept of the Sabbath and bring in the correspondence course and bring in booklets and bring in the Plain Truth magazine. And I had to hear about the Sabbath and the holy days and, and God's way of life. And frankly, when my brother finally met a baptizing tour and they encouraged him to go to Ambassador College, I was glad. <laughs> now I was free without any awareness to do my thing. After all, the girl I liked was only two houses down the street. I had my own car, 1953 Pontiac. I had my own car. I had a full tuition scholarship to a, an accredited college. I was going to be a chemical engineer. Free ride. I didn't have to, I just stayed at home and I commuted back and forth, but all my expenses were paid except for my books. And had it made. And then my brother came home for the summer. And then I didn't like the Sabbath even more. <laughs> because here he was at home, and he had been an ambassador for a year, and he learned the keeping the Sabbath day, but he kept it very strictly. We hardly saw him on the Sabbath. He'd hibernate in his room all day, I don't know, studying, praying, whatever, and he'd come down and eat something, and he'd go back upstairs again. And, he'd, and then he'd eat, uh, be up there for a while, and then time for lunch or dinner, he'd come downstairs, eat, and he'd go back upstairs again. And that irritated my parents. So when he went back to college that year, I was thankful and grateful. Now I was free to pursue my own course, to play my sports, to do my thing on the Sabbath without any an awareness or any troublesome uh, thoughts in my mind. I was going into my senior year of high school. I didn't want any restrictions. I wanted to have my high school year great. But you know what lingered in the back of my mind? As I played varsity basketball for two years, and we had a good team, man for man. But we couldn't play together. And we, my dad never even had to ask me, Garrett, did you win or lose tonight when I came home Tuesday nights and Friday nights? When I would come home, he would only look at my posture, which was this. <laughs> he knew I lost. He didn't even ask. And it was many of those poses more than the other. Well, as time went on, I was pleased not to look into the Sabbath, but one year later, as I began to go to Washington and Jefferson College in Washington, PA, the accredited school where I had my uh, full tuition scholarship, I began to look at some of my brother's literature that he left behind. I began to get convicted about the Sabbath, but first my attitude was, well, if I have to break the Sabbath, because I went Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday to school, if I have to break it anyway going to school, I might as well go to the dances on Friday night and football games on Saturday afternoon. After all, I'm breaking it anyway, why not break it more? <laughs> and I remember one day praying in my closet, because you see, I took the Bible literally, and it said, enter your closet. Now, my closet was very small, <laughs> filled with clothes and shoes all over the floor. And when you closed the door, you couldn't see anything, and you could barely breathe. <laughs> but I remember, after becoming convicted that God's Sabbath day did mean something, I promised him in a heartfelt prayer that I would never willingly break it again. Never knowingly. I finished out that year and I tried everything I could to keep my full tuition scholarship. I'll change my program so I don't need to be a chemical engineer. I'll be a German teacher. Well, I was good in German at that time. 
And I said, I'll, I'll be a German teacher. That's, went, talked to all, to all the professors, couldn't do it. It was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and there were Saturday classes I had to take. So I said, I will not do this. So I gave that up, applied to another couple of schools, found out some of their classes were on Sabbath, wouldn't work. So in effect, I was forced to go to Ambassador College. In the meantime, my brother Dave, Pasadena, his senior year, he was having, making these re recordings and he was sending them back. Uh, he'd have different co-eds on there saying, Gary, we'd love to see you here at Ambassador College. <laughs> Gary, we'd like you to come. Why don't you come? And, and, and enticing me, but that didn't work necessarily. But it, frankly, I couldn't go anywhere else. So I said, I'll apply. Now, I wasn't totally convinced of the church. I said, you know what? If he's not preaching the truth, I'm going to find that out. He says he'll never charge you anything, but I'll get all the literature I can and see if he ever charges me. Not once did he ever charge me. I had my brother's old booklets. I was able to mark, they were marked somewhat, and I was able to remark them my way, too. Plus, I ordered all the new booklets, got the Plain Truth magazine, got the correspondence course, went over the correspondence course, listened to the world tomorrow two times a day, one at 3.30 in the afternoon on WPIT Pittsburgh, and the other one at 10.30 at night as I was going to sleep, WWVA. And I would get the same program maybe a couple days later, so it was one I really liked. I made sure to hear it a second time. And I began to prove it, and I began to say, you know what? God's Sabbath is right. God's Sabbath is good for me. I applied and was accepted to Ambassador College in 1959. Roy Holliday is here. He's a fellow classmate of that particular year. And I began to keep the Sabbath. But when I first started to keep the Sabbath, I strangled myself. <clears throat> My wife can tell you, they, they were scared of me when I would ask anybody for a date, which was very rare. But if I ask, ask a girl to be escorted, if I would like to escort her to Bible study. We had to walk a mile to get to the Shakespeare Club in Pasadena. That's where the Bible study was. We'd walk a mile. They were afraid of me, she told me later on. <laughs> because I either had my scripture cards along, say, hey, let's, let's see how many scriptures we can know. That's a real charming date. Or, <laughs> or they knew they were going to get quizzed on the world news, or on how many points they could remember the sermon on the way back. She said, they feared you. Well, I thought I could only talk about those things. And so I, every time sunset would come, I'd almost feel like the straight, straight jacket was coming on. And the Sabbath, to me, was not a delight. I did not find joy in it. I found, look, when's this going to be over so I can now have some happiness? But that wasn't what God intended. That's the way I did it, perhaps my self-righteous self. When I went to Ambassador College, I proved the truth. I went in the fall of 59. In December of 1959, I was baptized. And I began to see a better way. I began to learn from others who had kept the Sabbath a whole lot longer than I had some of the ways that you do on the Sabbath. You don't have to be this strict to yourself. You should strictly keep the Sabbath from sunset to sunset. I'm not saying don't do that. But I, I was putting burdens on myself. I wouldn't measure how far I walked, but I'm sure I didn't go more than seven-eighths of a mile. Yes, I did to go to Bible study and the Sabbath services. But I began to appreciate the Sabbath in a more balanced way. I was learning to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. We find the commandment given in Exodus 20 and verse 8. I love God's Sabbath day. We sang about it, God's holy Sabbath day. Do you love it? There are many things about the Sabbath day that we should all remember every time it comes around. But Exodus 20, verse 8, we read this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Not one in seven, 
See, and I can extrapolate, now I'm going to read into it. This is eisegesis I'm reading into this, not reading out of it. What does it say? That's exegesis. I'm reading out of it. It says, the seventh day is the Sabbath of God. Reading into it, it say, well, the principle here is one in seven, so you can pick whatever day you want. So Sunday's okay, Friday, whatever you want to do. That's reading into it. That's not what it says. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. If you have people staying with you in your house, you don't make them break the Sabbath day. If you have people that you pay at your servants, they belong to you, you give them the day off. In verse, and he said, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, verse 11, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Because he was tired? No. God never gets tired. It isn't because he was tired. It's because he wanted to put his presence into the day he wanted his people to keep. And putting his presence into this day makes it holy. Are these 24 hours from sunset last night to sunset tonight, are they any different than sunset from Thursday night to Friday night? Can you see any difference? I don't see any difference. But there is a difference. You and I just don't see it. And when you keep God's Sabbath day with understanding, it becomes a delight, it becomes a joy, and it gives you so much hope for life. I want to read to you a couple of commentaries, a couple of comments from commentaries. First, first one comes from Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown. Here's what he says <clears throat> under, the, under Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, comment, commenting on this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He goes on to say, the word remember implies that it was well known and recognized. You know what some want you to believe? They want you to believe that when God codified the Ten Commandments, that was the first time they ever heard of the Sabbath. That's not true. It harkens back to creation. Notice what also is mentioned. And this is from, uh, from Adam Clark. Talks about the Sabbath. The word Shabbat means to rest or cease from labor. And the sanctification of the Sabbath day is commanded. But here's what he goes on to say. Some have presumptuously inferred that there is no Sabbath under the Christian dispensation. Our previous association used to say, we will always keep the Sabbath because they said, Christ is your Sabbath. See, we always believe in Christ. Christ your Sabbath, you always keep the Sabbath. He didn't say that. Christ didn't say, I am your rest. He said, I'll give you rest in Matthew 11. I will give you, not I am your rest, I'll give you rest. But they said, no, Christ is your rest. Therefore, as long as you believe in Christ, you can say, I'll always keep the Sabbath. You don't. It's the seventh day of the week. But notice what this commentary says, all types are, are full force till the thing signified by them takes place. But the thing signified, is Adam Clark's commentary, by the Sabbath is that rest in glory which remains for the people of God. The rest talking about the kingdom of God. Notice what it says. Therefore, this is a man of the world. This is a commentary not written by us. Therefore, the moral obligation of the Sabbath must continue till it is swallowed up by eternity. When there's no more need for keeping time is what he's saying. But God says as long as they're human beings, they will always need to keep time. The Sabbath, Sabbath day is still there and still in force. So what I would like to share with you are 10 remembrances, especially for the Sabbath day what we ought to think about and remember when the Sabbath comes around. I'll give you 10 of them. You may not think of all 10 of them every week, but maybe it'll help you to think more about the Sabbath day. We chose this topic because this year we're ending our winter family weekend with the Sabbath day. 
And we've had some really good presentations, and I've seen some of the outlines of them here about the Sabbath and the joy of the Sabbath and all the rest, and I wish I had known that when I was a young person. But anyway, here we go. I want to share 10, 10 remembrances, and I'll go quickly with them. Number one, remember to honor God. The Sabbath day is a day to honor God. All right, take a look at Isaiah 58 and verse 13. Isaiah 58 and verse 13. Here the prophet Isaiah wrote, Isaiah 58, 13, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, he means turn away not from keeping it, turn away from doing your thing on it, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him. Not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasures or your desires desires or purpose, nor speaking your own words. But he says, you shall honor him. The Sabbath day is a day to honor God. It's a day set apart by God for us to have a relationship with him, to pray, to study, to meditate on his ways, to think about the past week, how could I have done better? What can I do better this next week? To, to analyze yourself and to look at, but more importantly, to praise God and to worship him and to tell him you love him and to learn from him. It's a day to honor God, to hallow him, because it is his day, his day. I'm gonna share with you a quote, it's number three, <clears throat> which is a different translation, Isaiah 58, 13. Yes, this is a Matthew Henry commentary, sorry. It says, nothing must be done that puts contempt on the Sabbath day. We must turn away our foot from the Sabbath, from trampling on it. He says, from living at large and taking a liberty to do what we please on the Sabbath day without control. Going on, skipping down to another portion, he says, on Sabbath days, we must not talk of our own ways. He goes on to say, for you must then mind God's ways, make religion the business of the day. In all we say and do, we must put a difference between this day and other days. The Sabbath day is special. It's special, and we, need, we must be on guard to keep it special. In our own lives and families, I was talking to a younger person. They were saying, well, you know, I've always been keeping the Sabbath ever since I was a little kid, and I've just taken it for granted. But those of us who had to fight to keep it, those of us who had to overcome something that was enticing us away, we realize how special that is. People who work hard all week long, they realize what a blessing, and you do too. You're a college student, you're working hard. Boy, that Friday night comes along, you're delighted. And you can, you can study, you can you know, take some extra time for rest, but it's a wonderful day for you when you've been going, going, going all week long. So the first remembrance on the Sabbath day, remember to honor God, hallow him, give him appreciation and thank him that he gave you this seventh day. Number two. Remember him as creator. One of, the, one of the reasons we keep the Sabbath day for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and all that's there. And the seventh day he rested. It harkens back to God's creation. Exodus 20 verse 11 as we've already read. But Genesis 2 verses 1 to 3 at creation God made something else. His creation did not stop after the sixth day when he said everything is very good. He made one more creation in Genesis chapter 2. Remember, he had already set the, set the heavenly bodies in such a way that they would give days and times and seasons and years. But Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, thus were the, and I'm reading out of King James, but modernizing it, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, on the seventh day, the day after creation, God ended his work which he had made. So it's a reminder of God's creation. He rested the seventh day from all his work which he had made and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. 
And that sanctify means to set it apart. It's a special day that God has set apart, but he made it. He made it holy. How did he make it holy for us? He says, God blessed it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which he had created and made. So we remember him as creator. And bear in mind, he made the Sabbath day holy. Can you keep any other day on a weekly basis holy? You cannot. If I give you some cold water and say, keep it hot. Can you keep cold water hot? No. You can make it hot, put it on the stove, and then you could keep it hot. But unless it is hot already, you cannot keep it hot. You cannot keep a day holy that was not made holy. And who makes things holy? God does. God put his very presence into that day, and frankly, it's his day. It's God's day. He made the Sabbath as part of his creation, and we need to remember God Sabbath day, and as we think about it, we need to think about creation, and oftentimes to go out on a walk, to take a look around, to see what God has made, to reflect on the trees or the birds that are flying in the tree, or the squirrels that are going up and down my trees next to our, our family room, where we spend a lot of our time sitting there and looking around. It's awesome to realize God made all this. God, you made all those animals. So you made those birds. Look at those birds. You know, the blackbirds are getting ready to fly down south. And a whole flock of them come into your tree. And all of a sudden, the flock of them take off again. I don't know who's giving them the signals, but they all take off together. Who made that? Who made the trees so beautiful? Who made, made everything the right color? Who made it in such harmony? And not disunity, harmony. God did. Every Sabbath day, remember God is your creator. We used to do with our children, we had an encyclopedia of wildlife books. And what we would do, we would say, okay, let's all pick, up, pick out an animal or whatever you want and, and, and talk. So they would go grab one, they'd pick it out and they'd read it. And we'd give a report on it to each other, talk about the handiwork of God, what he had made. A lot of good things you can do on the Sabbath to remember the Sabbath day. So remember God as creator. Number three, remember who he is and who you are. Sabbath is a day of remembering who he is and who you are. It puts us in perspective. In Deuteronomy 5, the companion chapter to Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5, he brings this out verses 12 to 15. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 12. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it. Set it apart as something special. To sanctify means to make it holy or set it apart for something special. Do you set it apart? Oh, and by the way, I remember my, oh, was it my first or second year? No, second or third year teaching anyway. I, I did a survey of all the elders' children attending Ambassador College. You know how many there were? Over 150 from either ministers' children or they were elders' children. I did a survey of them and asked them, how did their parents make the Sabbath special? Vast majority said Friday night meals. It was always a special time. Friday night meals together. It bonded them. It made, pointed them to the one who made everything, and they made that day special. So he says, set it apart. Set it apart. Treat it special. And they said they made special. Their mom made a special meal. They would make special desserts. Sometimes the kids would do the special desserts, and sometimes they would pitch in and make the meals. They made it special. Verse, six, verse 13, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day, notice again, it's not one in seven, is the Sabbath of the Lord your God in it. You shall not do any work, you nor your son or your daughter nor your manservant nor your maidservant nor your ox nor your ass nor your uh, cattle nor your stranger that is in, with your, in within your gates nor your manservant nor your maidservant may rest as well as you. And verse 15, and remember 
that you were a servant in the land of Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out from there through a mighty hand and stretched out arm. And therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath helps us understand God and helps us understand us. Now we weren't all strangers, but we were strangers to God. God, do you remember on the Sabbath day, sometimes I'll sit in my chair and I'll think about, where would I be if I didn't have God's Sabbath day? What would I be doing? What would a lot of you be doing? Oh, I'm gonna do everything I can. I'll work seven days a week. I'll work every day. I'll work every hour I can. I'll accumulate as much as I can. Where would you be? Shot. That's where you'd be. Spiritually, you'd be shot. You'd be distressed. God set apart the Sabbath day so you can remember who you are. It's a humbling experience to say God had to bring me out from my own ways. It's a humbling experience to say, you know, God, I'm sorry. And in tears, I said, I'm sorry. I trampled on your Sabbath day. I'm so sorry that I did that to you. It helps me remember who I was. It also helps you remember who he is, Exodus 31. Exodus 31, when you keep the Sabbath, you know who God is. You know where, you're, where you owe your existence to, and you know why. Because he had to bring us out from our former way. Exodus chapter 31, verse 12. For the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. I'm the one who sets you apart and makes you my children. I'm the one who sets you apart and makes you part of my family ultimately. I'm the one. And I want you to worship me. The Sabbath day is about knowing God. I want a relationship with you. And if you don't keep the Sabbath day, you pretty soon begin to forget who the true God is, what he's all about. Remember the Sabbath because it helps you understand who he is and helps you understand who you are. Fourth remembrance is remember that God wants us to obey. The Sabbath day is a test commandment. Oftentimes when we wanted to find out whether somebody thought their previous baptism in another church was valid, we would say, now when did you find out about the seventh day Sabbath? Well, I haven't found out about that yet. Or, well, I found out about it, but it didn't matter to me back then. Well, why? that's a test commandment. It's a test commandment as to whether you will walk in God's law not in the Sabbath law only. And notice we read this over in ex, uh, sorry, yes, Exodus chapter 16. And by the way, Exodus 16 did occur before chapter 20. Not necessarily chrono chronologically here we're talking, but it, before they got the codified Ten Commandments, the Sabbath was already known. Exodus 16. And I'll just pick out a few verses. This was a time when the Israelites were murmuring about a lack of food. You remember? <laughs> Poor Moses. Finally, he, he was denied going into the promised land. He'd had enough. Struck the rock. Well, do, I have to, do I have to give you water? Slap the rock. They murmured him, into, murmured him into disobedience to God. He didn't make it into the promised land. He got to see it. God said, I'll let you see it, but you're not going to go in. Because you listened to those murmurers, but they were constantly, we want food, we want food, we want food. God said, okay, I'll give you food. And you know what they're going to call it? What is it? <laughs> what is that? What is it? That's manna. What is that? And that's what it was. What is it? Manna. But Exodus chapter 16, Exodus 16, verses 3 and 4, after they were murmuring, you could see that in verse 2, the children of Israel said to, said to, to them, would to God that we had died in the land, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt where we sat by the flesh pots. And when we did eat bread to the full, and for we have brought, you have brought us forth to this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. <laughs> We'd have been better off to be slaves, at least having cucumbers, than to be out here dying in the desert. 
There are no graves. Well, they could have dug graves, so if they wanted graves, they'd give you a grave. But point being, you brought us out here to let us die. Verse 4, then said the Lord to Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Okay, I heard them. I heard their complaints. I heard their grumbling. I heard their murmuring. I'll give you some food. The people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them. What? Whether they will walk in my law or not. And here's how he proved them. It shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So they bring in double the amount they normally need for one day on the sixth day. So they don't have to gather it on the seventh. This didn't sit well with some because we have greedy people. Verses 19 and 20, Moses said, let no man leave of it. Now when you get it, you eat it all or burn it, but you can't let it stay over till the morning. It will stink up the camp. As Moses said, let no man leave of it in the morning. Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to Moses, but some of them left it until the morning and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was upset with them, was wroth with them. So that, that's what will happen if you bring in too much. And if you don't consume it all, what is it? You know, give me some what is it. Okay, what is it? I don't know, what is it? <laughs> that's funny. Can I have some ketchup with my what is it? Maybe I can get a whatchamacallit with my what is it, and I'm going to have some candy and my what is it too. All right, let's go down to verse 23. Verse 23, and he said to them, this is that which the Lord has said, tomorrow, so this is the sixth day, the, this, tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath. They already had God's Sabbath before the Ten Commandments were given, codified. He said, before they take tomorrow's the rest of the Holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today. See that, boil that which you will boil today, that and that which remains. Lay over for you to be kept in store until the morning. Now on Friday, the sixth day, it would stay two days and not stink. But on any other time, they could only get enough for one day. And so they laid it up until the morning, and as Moses had said, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. So it didn't get worms. And verse 25, and Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. God's not going to give you any bread on the seventh day. But... Our people, six days, he said, you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there shall be none. And it came to pass, do you have killjoys? Do you have people that don't believe? Yes. Do you have people that don't follow? Yes. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather it, and they found none. Notice what God said in verse 28. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep not just my commandment, my commandments and my laws? God used the Sabbath day as a test commandment of obedience. Will you listen, God says. If you gather too much during the week, it's going to stink the next day. But if you gather on the sixth day enough for two days, it won't stink. Don't go out on the Sabbath. There won't be any. They go out anyway. God says, I want to test them to see if they'll walk in my law or not. God's Sabbath day is a test commandment. Whether we will obey his laws, not law, or not. So that's another remembrance. Number five is a remembrance to assemble. God's Sabbath day, on God's Sabbath day, he expects us to assemble. Did you know that regularly missing church for Catholics will send them straight to hell? It's a mortal sin to miss Sunday church. A mortal sin. Mortal sin sends them straight to hell. That's how strong they think about Sunday. 
how do you think about the Sabbath? Now, we don't believe in heaven and hell type things. But doesn't it reflect an attitude? Well, I don't care about the Sabbath. Well, who cares? Well, tomorrow they'll say, well, who cares? Well, this is a, who cares? Doesn't matter. Does matter. It does matter. It shows God your loyalty and your faithfulness. Remember to assemble. Le Leviticus 23.3. <clears throat> now, here we find the Sabbath lumped in with the feast days, which we love. Leviticus 23.3. He says, speak about, these are my feasts, verse 2, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So the Sabbath day is a holy convocation. Here's what Amplified Version says it. To Leviticus 23.3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation or an assembly by summons. You shall be, do no work on that day. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Today's English version puts it this way. You have six days in which you do your work, but remember that the seventh day, the Sabbath, is a day of rest. On that day you shall do no work but gather for worship. The Sabbath belongs to the Lord no matter where you live. That's God's Sabbath day. So that's how he puts it when you talk about Leviticus 23, 3. The Sabbath day is a day of assembling. It's a day, in fact, Hebrews 10, 24 says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. If you check out the Greek on it, it says, don't forsake assembling yourselves assembling. It's a double whammy. And how do you assemble? You come together to worship God. One lawyer in Canada lamented, he was not in our church, but he was our advisor in Canada on when I was up there over the, in the uh, office of national office coordinator. We had him, he advised our council and he advised us, but he lamented, he said, you know, the world is getting to so many individual things. You know, you can have your own TV, you can have your own radio, you can have your own cell phone, you can have your own this. He said, in our day, you know, you had to gather around the radio. In our day, you had to gather around the TV set. You didn't have everybody going his own way. He said, I'm afraid that in our world today, a lot of people are losing out on community. There's no coming together. That's everybody doing his or her own thing. The Sabbath is the day not to do our own thing. Sabbath is the day to do God's thing with God's people. That's what the Sabbath is all about. So remember to assemble, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And how do you help people? He said, provoke others to love. How do you provoke others to love? See, if I just want to hear a sermon... I could just go online. I could tune in to the webcast every week, and I'd get fed. But you know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't provoke anybody to love. You know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't be able to help anybody, except staying out of their way. Maybe that would be a help to them. But I mean, if I was in their way. Uh, if you keep the Sabbath day, you're there to encourage. And one lady told me, it, New York City. She came to church in a wheelchair and she said, was lamenting to me, what good am I? I'm no good to God's church. I said, let me tell you what I feel. Every week I see you sitting there smiling. That means the world to me. You inspire so many people by your diligence to what you have to go through to get here and you're still smiling. She could stay at home and listen to the webcast. I wouldn't see her smiling, would I? She wouldn't have an impact on me. Our Bible study last night was excellent by Mr. Waterhouse, and he talked about how we want to help others. Do you have an impact on me? You can only do it if you assemble. Number six, sixth point. Remember the Sabbath day to be joyful. The Sabbath is a delight. It's a joyful day. 
the Psalms, Psalm 92 is a, is a psalm, and I'm not going to go there, but a song, psalm for the Sabbath. And it's about praises to God on the Sabbath. Now, how do you praise God in an unhappy mood? But in Isaiah 58 and verse 14, Isaiah 58 and verse 14, we are to delight in God's Sabbath day. It is to be a day of joy. It's like one of the feast days, right? It's listed in Leviticus 23. He tells us in Leviticus, in, in Deuteronomy 16, 14, regarding the feasts, you shall rejoice. God's Sabbath is a happy day. It's not a miserable day. It's not a day of being put in a tight ja uh, uh, straight jacket like I thought it was. It wasn't a day of constriction. It's a day of enjoyment. We need to learn to honor and praise God on that day. We need to learn to share ourselves with others, and we le need to learn to be joyful. It is a day to be joyful. Isaiah 58, 14, he says, if you do these things, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, his, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. If you call the Sabbath a delight, then you yourself will delight in it. It is a day to be joyful. It is a day to come and sing before God. It's a day to, what, the music was beautiful. It's a day to be uplifted. It's a day to uplift others. The Sabbath day, remember it, because it's a time to be joyful, to rejoice like we do at the feasts. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 24, just pick out one of them. Psalms 119, verse 24. God's law does not shackle us. God's law does not forbid you from doing anything that's good for you. A loving father always wants what's good for his children. Will he give them 10 milkshakes at McDonald's all at one time? No. But the rule that I read, that I learned from, say yes as much as you can to your children, as long as it's good for them. Say yes, not no, say yes as long as it's good for them. And we've got a heavenly father who says yes to his children a lot. We do. It's a time to be joyful. But Psalms 119, verse 24, we read this. The testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. And notice verse 47. And I will delight myself in your commandments which I have loved. And one of those commandments, which he delighted himself in, was God's Sabbath day. Be joyful on God's Sabbath day. When you think about the Sabbath day, think about it with joy. What am I going to learn this Sabbath? I wonder who I'm going to meet. I wonder if they got the job. I've been praying about them. I wonder how they're feeling. Are they healthy again? There's one lady I ask almost every week that I see her. How are you doing? Feeling good? I pray about you every week. One lady I prayed about in, in New Zealand. I didn't think I'd ever get down there in 1990, uh, 2001, my wife. And I ended up in New Zealand on the Sabbath. And I met this lady that I didn't know who she was, but I'd been praying for her for years. And I was so happy to meet her. And I told her, I pray for you all the time. I'm so glad to see you. I didn't think I'd even see you here. It was a delight. Delight yourself in the Lord, and you always have plenty to be joyful about. Number seven is remember to fellowship. Fellowship. I'm going to read Acts 16, verses 13 to 15, and I'm going to read it out of a different translation, the uh, New Living Bible. But before I do that, let me tell you what fellowship means from the Nelson's Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Here's what it means sharing things in common with others. In the New Testament, fellowship has a distinctly spiritual meaning. Sharing with others. How do I do that at home? Get on the phone? Probably not availability. How do people tell me their issues? How do people say to me, confess to me their faults? Now, I don't have a confessional booth on the Sabbath. But how do they say, you know, I've been working on this. I'm trying to overcome this. And I haven't been able to yet. Can you please pray for me? How do you do that if you're not around them? How do you find that out? Let me read to you from Acts 16, verses 13 to 15, reading it from New Living. On the Sabbath, 
we went a little way outside the city to, the, to a riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some, some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatara, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. And as she listened to us, fellowship, as she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. And then she was baptized along with other members of her household. And she asked us to be her guests. Now, here's the supreme fellowship. Here's what she said to Paul, because she thought Paul probably wasn't going to come. She said, if you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, how can he not? He just baptized her. She said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. Fellowship. Spend time with God's people. Learn about them. Love them. Share with them. Share with them what's happening in your life. Share with them good stories of success. Share with them your cares and concern and ask them to pray for you as you pray for them. Number eight, remember to rest. The Sabbath day is a day of rest. And what I've found that sometimes I may rest more than others. Sometimes my body says to me, rest more. Sometimes my body says to me, fellowship more. Sometimes my body says to me, study more, pray more. Sometimes one, they're not always equal. It's not always one third, one third, one third. Sometimes your body's really tired. You may end up getting more rest. You're guilty. Oh, I should have studied more. I should have prayed more. No, you probably needed more rest. So some days you may exercise the rest. And of course, Exodus 20, 16, 23 does talk about the Sabbath as a day of rest. But look at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23 and verse 56. They had just been preparing the, the various ointments for Jesus Christ's burial. Luke 23 and verse 50. Is that the one I want? Yes, I do want 23, 56. Here it is. And they returned and prepared the spices and ointments and, that was on the preparation day, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. They rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. And that means physically, spiritually being rejuvenated. The, the Greek word is hesukadzo, hesukadzo. And it means to stay still, to refrain from labor, to relax, to take it easy, to put on some nice comforting music, to have a hot chocolate in front of a fireplace in the wintertime, to relax, to take it easy. Sabbath is a rest day. Six days you labor, but the Sabbath is a Sabbath of rest. In fact, the word Shabbat does mean rest. Number nine, the Sabbath, every week that comes along, keeps us in remembrance of God's kingdom to come. It's a picture of the thousand-year period, and many recognize that rest day. Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown put this out, write this about that, that commentary about Hebrews 4 and verse 9. Listen to what they say. This verse indirectly establishes the obligation of the Sabbath. It says, for the type continues until the anti-type supersedes it. So and he goes on to say, the typical earthly Sabbath must continue until then, when the kingdom, when Jesus Christ comes to set up that anti-typical rest. And that's the thousand-year rest. This is what the commentary, Jameson, Fawcett, and Braun, Hebrews 4, 9. The typical earthly Sabbath must continue until then. The Jews call the future rest the day which is all Sabbath, when God's kingdom is going to be here. But Hebrews 4, Hebrews chapter 4, you see in Hebrews 4, he uses the Sabbath as a type of the kingdom. Hebrews chapter 4. 
And we'll notice, notice verse 4, he says, For he spoke, I believe it's Paul writing to the Hebrews, he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this way, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Let's skip down to verse 9. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. But you know what's interesting in this whole chapter, the word kataposan is used for rest all the way through, except for verse 9. In verse 9, the Greek word there is sabbatismos, a keeping of a Sabbath. Now, of course, the Sabbath pictures the future, but it also is for us today. There still remains, and as he said, it always will be here until the antitype shows up. What's the antitype? The kingdom of God, the thousand-year reign of God. So Hebrews 4, verse 9, every Sabbath that comes around should be a reminder to all of us, needs to be a reminder to all of us of God's kingdom to come, what we all look forward to. Number 10, finally, the Sabbath day remembrance. Remember that the Sabbath is a gift from God. If I gave you a gift and you threw it on the floor, stomped on it, how would I feel? Very disrespected. God gives us the gift of the Sabbath day. He made it for humankind gave us a gift. What do you do with it? What do we do with the Sabbath day? Genesis 2 verses 1 to 3, he made it for us. He made the Sabbath. He set it apart. He didn't need to rest, but he put his rest into it, so he made it holy. And only he can make things holy. And the only way you keep it holy is for it to have been holy to start with. And you keep it holy by how you treat it, by how you look upon it, by how we honor it, and by how we glorify God in it. But notice in Mark 2, verses 27 and 28, he gave man the Sabbath. And remember, too, that every good and every perfect gift comes from God. But Mark 2, verses 27 and 28, he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God didn't say, you know what? I've got this Sabbath day now, but I don't have anybody to keep it. I guess I better make some men. I better make some humans. I got the Sabbath. What am I going to do with it? But he gave it to us. The Sabbath was made for man. Not man for the Sabbath. He goes on to say, Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. It's a gift from God. God gives us that gift. How do we treat it? With respect? Do we prize it? Do we honor him on it? It's a gift from God, as every perfect gift is from him. So every seventh day of the week, I hope we will remember the Sabbath day. I hope we will remember to honor God. He is the creator. To know him and know who you are. I hope we will remember that it is a test commandment to whether you obey him in every other thing. It is a time to assemble and to delight in it. It's a time to fellowship with one another. It's a time to rest. It's a time to picture the kingdom. And it is a blessing from God to us. So brethren, students, young people, old people, middle-aged people, and any others that are here, preteens, babies, may we always remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy.